Hi, my name is Will, and welcome to the distorted transmission for today. Um, I'm chatting to a band called Pull Down the Sun. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks, bro. Good. How are you? Good. I'm not too bad. Could you guys introduce yourselves, uh, starting with Kurt, I guess? Uh, on court. Court? Yeah, yeah, court. <laughs> oh, I thought uh, it was Kurt. Oh, it is, it is Kurt, um, the Dutch pronunciation, but I've lived my whole life being called court. My dad's called court. My granddad's called court. So Let's start with court. Cool. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> hey, I'm Court. Um, I sing and play guitar for Pull Down the Sun. I'm Jason, and I just only do guitars, and that's it. Um, I'm Stefan. I do the drumming bits. And Stefan, who's uh, who's missing? Someone missing? Someone missing? Mm. No. Oh, the iPad. No. <laughs> oh. So you're just a three piece. Is that right? Yes. In my mind, for some reason, you guys were a four piece. And court, you also you also play guitar. Like you 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 were you were the two guitarists. I'm I'm not losing my mind. Our bassist that was with us left um, right before we sort of put out our album, which we'll talk about in a bit. But uh, we decided we tried out a few people. Nothing really worked out. Um, so it kind of left us in a position where we we decided should, should we try backing tracks because we had all the album tracks down. We play to a click, play to backing tracks. Uh, we can play with the synth as well as the bass, the piano, the keys, anything else. Uh, we did it for a few gigs and then decided, shit, this is actually working really well for us. You know, we don't have to, you know, save a spare seat in the car. This, the iPad always plays in time, always plays in tune. Unlike Stefan. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I was just thinking exactly that. Yeah, he's the one who keeps the, the timing going. He plays with his in ears. And he... It's me that fucks it all up. <laughs> <laughs> Can you give me a brief history of the band? We've been around since 2014, 2015. It was sort of a side project from my other band. This one sort of took off and it became something that we enjoyed more than my side project. So we kept going. All right. Anything else you guys want to add? No, that's pretty much it. That's how we came yeah, about, really. Nailed it. Well done. When was the last time we saw each other? As far as I remember, it was Smash Fest in January 2020. Mm. Something happened to you, Court. Uh, you want to tell me that funny little story again? <sighs> it was about an hour before I set during the day outside. We thought, fuck, it'd be really cool to go for a swim at the beach. So we went down the beach. Um, I thought I'd try my, my hand at body surfing. Uh, where the two waves sort of break in the middle. I was in the middle and the waves rolled me around. I stood up, my arm was hanging down. <laughs> These guys were sort of back in the waves going, laughing at me. Stefan's sort of <laughs> close to the shore. He goes, you're right. I went, mm, nah, nah. <laughs> so dislocated my shoulder, really, really fun time. Um, there was luckily a nurse walking past on the beach. <laughs> What was her name Karen? I thought it was Bonnie. Where did I get that oh, from? Same name. Same name. Yeah, same thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, she popped it back into place and I thought, fuck yeah, sweet. That's all good. It, it still hurt a bit. And then I went to put my T-shirt back on and it popped it out again. So we had to call her back. She came and put it back in. <laughs> and then we decided, yeah, okay, fuck. We need to play this gig. We're playing in about 20 minutes. We need to get back to the venue. We did. We saw you outside and went, fuck, Will, you've got to save us. Have you got any duct tape? <laughs> So you helped build me back together, and yeah. we we managed to play that set because of you. I think it was the weirdest request ever. Like <laughs> <laughs> bunch of guys coming up all covered in water and sand, going, "Can you tape our guitarist <laughs> back together?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure." We took your shirt off, and then we we ran a couple of strips like across your chest and across your back and sort of around your shoulder. So it kind of immobilized it, but you were just able to like move move your fingers enough for the fretboard i used my body to move the guitar more than my hand moving along the fretboard so i watched the footage back of your set and you can actually see that that you're kind of standing and sort of playing kind of weirdly and if you don't know <laughs> if you don't know the reason why you know you look a little bit like a hunchback or something but yeah it's because your, your shoulder yeah. would have popped out otherwise nah, i'm just really fucking weird <laughs> <laughs> The next question is uh, about your album of Valleys and Mountains. It came out in September 2020, and it seems to have done very well. Uh, so well, in fact, that you have a repressing of the album coming out in February in a variety of colored variants for collectors. So let's talk about that. Where did the recording of that album actually take place way back in the beginning? 
most of that like all the drums and a lot of the a lot of the tracking was done actually at Jason's house um we've got to set up there a little studio we took our time with it we recorded it over oh realistically probably about a year and a half um like off actual recording and you know sitting down and deciding what we're going to do with the songs and things like that right and it was good no pressure or anything no deadlines and it was sent off and it was uh it was mixed by uh zoran wasn't it zoran mendonca it was yeah 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 up in auckland there and he smashed it out of the park really made it sound massive so i went to band camp to sort of check out the album because although you did release it a little while ago and i did listen to a track or two i didn't really get too in depth with it but because we're doing the interview i thought i better do some homework and i was surprised to find that you don't have the old demo that you used to have there there was i think it was a four track demo or something like that um but i guess those songs were re-recorded properly and added to the album so would it be fair to say that this double album release is a sort of a compendium of your work today it's songs that we've written and, and played live for the last you know as course said before seven odd years kind of thing so it's all it's all stuff that's come up over that time the artwork kind of um sort of summed up your sort of vibe as well we reached out to an artist that we we'd saw done some of our favorite bands or one of our favorite bands artwork uh letters from the colony uh their artwork was it was stunning it was you know striking and it was colorful Something that we we wanted to do was have a colourful album, mainly mainly get away from the whole skull and crossbones, or you know. Uh, so his name's Chris Panettiere. He's an American uh, American guy. Uh, we just reached out to him, and said, "Hey, look, you know, this is what we want to do. Would you be keen to commission a piece of art for us?" And he did, and it turned out bloody neat. Like we we put a lot of trust in him. Like you know, we're sending money over to someone we don't know. We know his his ability with art, but he's not from New Zealand. So we couldn't quite figure out, you know, would he get it? Would he understand what we're trying to mean? You know, what, what we're trying to get across. And he sent back, I think it was the black and white version, uncolored. Right. We almost shat the bed. Like, Holy fuck. <laughs> so he, he actually did a lot of, a lot of research into our culture, you know, Maori culture into, um, into the, the fauna, the, the flowers, everything. The wildlife, yeah, yeah. I was actually surprised when you said that it was an American guy. I was kind of taken aback by that because there is a lot of sort of Kiwiana, if you like, in it. So mm. yeah. yeah, we kind of wanted to have that that Kiwiana in there, minus you know, buzzy or was it buzzy bees and fucking <laughs> yeah. pineapple lumps and shit. So it's got the Wangaroa River. It's got our mountains, you know, Tongariro. It's got um, uh, Narahoi, I think Rupehu. They all kind of fly into one. But you know, I almost cried when I saw the first time. You know, saw the uh, the color coming right it was unreal as you say it's not quite what you would expect and that kind of gives it that extra impact you know you know if you if you have a heavy metal album you give it to someone you know they look at it and they go fuck yeah it looks heavy metal <laughs> if they don't like heavy metal they won't <laughs> listen to it <clears throat> but if you've got you know a striking beautiful piece of art people are more likely to go fuck what does it sound like so we kind of we lucked out that a it was it was beautiful and b you know People that don't listen to metal will pick it up and go, oh, I'll check this out, see what it sounds like, you know, and then put it down because they don't like it. I don't know. <laughs> but, at least, but at least they've listened to it. There are quite a, quite a few sort of gentle and sort of uh, instrumental passages in it that uh, that might lure somebody in who was unaware uh, yeah. before the the big like main track came in. So, yeah. Mm. Good idea, man. Clever. Yeah. Thanks. We totally thought of that. It was very on purpose, the whole thing. It was thing. very planned. Yeah. <laughs> and now for the uh, elephant in the room in regards to that uh, title track. Uh, here we go. It's, uh, it's very hard for me to ignore the obvious Gorgira influences, the most notable of them being in the title track of Valleys and Mountains. Uh, the pick scrapes and more than a few of the actual drum beats, shall we say, uh, beyond plagiarism. <laughs> I also totally dig Gojira, so the more the better in, in my book. Uh, but do you have anything to say in your defense? Fuck. <laughs> Sorry. No. <laughs> no, nah, fuck. Like, we, 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 we love them as a band. You know, collectively, we, you know, them, Deftones, uh, The Ocean, you know, those three sort of bands were, band, uh, were the ones that sort of brought us together. You know, collectively, we all dug their music. We all really liked it. And when we're trying to find our own sound, you know, of course, of course, we're going to try and, you know, emulate our heroes or sure. 
we went through phases of of listening to bands like that and then we're like fuck okay well we're starting to sound a little bit too much like them let's change it back or you know try out a different different style of playing but i don't know it's it's it just falls down to um you know you wear you wear your heart on your sleeve or you know your influence is on your sleeve and those sleeves are very long <laughs> you wouldn't be the first band to be guilty of that. In fact, pretty much every band is guilty of that to a certain degree. So next question. Um, you did a live air and and there's been one guy who's been real quiet. Yeah, this is all <laughs> on you, Jason. All right. So question for Jason. Here we go. Um, you, d- you did a live to air from the stomach, which is a Palmerston North music space for those who don't know. Uh, how how was that sort of so like playing to an empty room, but sort of um, knowing that a lot of people would actually watch the performance? It was very strange, kind of nerve wracking at the same time. But I don't know. It was it was definitely unique. Um, I haven't got any answers for this. <laughs> it was um, yeah, it, it was fucking strange. It, yeah, that's it all I've really, really got. Strange. Cool though, cool experience. Uh, I mentioned to Lisa from Music uh, Net NZ that I was interviewing you guys today, and she told me that there was a tour with with a band called East York, which I uh, shamefully had never heard of. They're they're from Melbourne, I believe, and of course the locals Caridian. So perhaps we can mention some of the dates for that event and any other events uh, of note that are coming up. Uh, Daz from East York hit us up uh, from over in Melbourne. The, there's a few Kiwis in the band. Uh, Tarquin is their singer, Tarquin Keys from Logic Defies Logic, who is, you know, we've met him quite a few times, played gigs with his other band, and he put us on to East York. It was supposed to happen in, I think it was September, it was supposed to go down, but due to COVID restrictions and, and them not being able to get into the country, they pushed it off until February next year. So uh, we're playing four shows, Wellington, Napier, Tauranga and Auckland. And they are on the 4th and the 5th for the Wellington and Napier and then the 11th and 12th for Tauranga and Auckland. Okay. And we're playing with our good buds, Caridian, who are our fucking boys. We love those <laughs> dudes. They've, we've played heaps of shows with them. And they're just a bunch of nice fucking dudes. And yep. Diddy, Diddy is a hunk. Diddy is a mm. fucking hunk. Oh. Yeah, and he's eye candy. Yeah, yeah, eye candy. <laughs> Speaking of dates and things uh, that, that people might want to look out for, when is this uh, vinyl re-release happening? That's in February too, isn't it? I should probably do a bit of a backstory on, on the actual vinyl release. So we, we originally released our, you know, self-released our album. We, we did our own pressing, you know, everything we sort of did, we did ourselves. About three to four, five months ago, we got an email from uh, the guitarist from the Ocean Collective or the Ocean, Robin Stapps, who also owns Pelagic Records. Uh, he asked us if you know he could buy a couple of copies because they've been listening to it in in their warehouse over in Germany. Uh, we kept talking, and he goes, "Fuck, should we should we do a reissue of your album?" So we said, "Yeah, fucking a, yeah, nah, yeah, nah, <laughs> nah." <laughs> uh, yeah, full circle moment for us. Really, like we, like I said in the start, this is a. You know, a, a massive influence on us as as artists, as a band. And I can kind of pinpoint when Jason and I were sitting on my couch back in, I think it was probably fucking 2011, watching a, a, a an ocean video called Firmament on a big screen, you know, YouTube. And I remember turning to him and going, fuck, that's pretty neat, eh? We should do that. <laughs> so it's it's really cool that, that Robin approached us and, you know, gave us this opportunity. So... The reissue, I think there's there's three three variants that are up um, at this point. Um, there is another two. I'm not too sure what's happening with those two pressings at the moment. Um, maybe a bit closer to to February, we'll find out. But yeah, so release February worldwide. We keep the distribution here for New Zealand, and yeah, you know, Wanganui to the rest of the world, man. So you'll actually have copies in this country. Yeah. So we've got a we've got some copies that we've ordered, but they might have some different variants than what we have here. So we'll, all the collectors in that will have to keep an eye out. I just bought some variants um, from 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 another band the other day, and uh, although they're a, they're a Kiwi band, um, they 
their sort of di their distro was over in I think Philadelphia or something. So I had to so I had to oh, like support this New Zealand band by paying American money to have it shipped yeah. all the way across the world. So it it uh, I think the shipping was as much as the album. So yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for keeping some some copies in this country so we can actually. Hey. Get a copy. We did it for you, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. I've got one question left, which is, uh, what's the plans going ahead? I guess this album's going to be a hard one to top. And uh, what what are you looking at doing, sort of beyond beyond this album? I think um, going forward, we've started writing some new material um, heading into next year. So I think we'll sort of um, we'll just continue sort of working on that stuff while we're while we're playing these gigs and things, and we might spring a new song out at some stage whenever that will be um later live show i mean um but yeah that's pretty much it just work on work on stuff going forward um just play as many shows as possible next year wherever we can um assuming we can which should be the case musically i sort of see pull down the sun as kind of plodders you tend to plod along and sort of <laughs> You know what I mean? You sort of release stuff very, very slowly, but but then finally, mm. when you when you actually manage to get it all sort of together at the end, you've got something really solid and you know worth worth listening to. But it but it but it does take you a while. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, all of us in the band like we love albums. We I don't know. No, I don't think any of us are that keen on the idea of just whipping out singles every three months sure. or something. You know, we've always all of us are just into that the whole experience. You know, we write the songs to be on an album we don't usually write anything that's just a standalone yeah it's hard to sell a story it's hard to tell a story with singles if, if you've got a concept behind what you're doing you know you've got you know all this stuff to share and if you go fuck hold on you know episode one yeah listen to this yeah then we're going to put out episode 10 you know fuck you <laughs> <laughs> albums are where it's at bro Shit. yeah i think we're just about at a time so is there anything else you'd like to add just at the end we just like to give a quick yeah, thanks to everyone who supported us this far. It's fucking, it's unbelievable that we we're able to do what we do. Uh, we also want to give thanks to Zoran, mixed it, mixed the album. Uh, Forrester Seville, who mastered the album. You know, our ladies, our kids, pretty much everyone that's you know taking care of us that we met on the road. We fucking love it, man. And me, especially Will, <laughs> duct tape guy. Yeah, <laughs> most important. I was saving that for the end and you ruined it. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Duct Tape Man. You're welcome. It was really nice catching up with you guys and I hope to see you at a gig sometime soon. All the best. Oh, cheers, Will. Later, brother. Right. See you. See ya. Oh, thanks for watching.